Hello guys, so we are here in Lugano at Plan B conference and uh, we have a very special guest, uh, Adam Beck, uh, who is uh, founder of uh, Blockstream and uh, as well he is one of the people who was cited in uh, Satoshi Nakamoto's uh, Bitcoin white paper and he is as well uh, inventor of uh, proof of work system on uh, uh, which Bitcoin mining is based. Great to have you here, Adam. So can you tell us about your background, how you started your involvement with cryptography and uh, about the invention of Hashcash? Yeah, I was... Um, I knew what RSA was uh, because one of the a friend of mine who's a master's student at the university was implementing it on a, a parallel computer. And then shortly after that, PGP was released, which is you know about encrypting emails and files so that only the recipient can decrypt it and I thought it was very interesting that <clears throat> a piece of technology could change the uh, balance of power for the individual and so um, I was uh, then I thought well let's see if there are other things like this that people are talking about so I looked around on the internet and found the site process where they were talking about this kind of thing and so um, one of the things that the cyberpunks were interested in was uh, privacy and anonymous remailers. So I was operating an anonymous remailer and people would spam through it. And so I was looking for a way to um, you know, prevent spam. And because the remailer is anonymous, you can't block the sender because you don't know who it is. And so I had to think of a different way to control spam, which is where the proof of work came from. You could, the sender could do some work and make a postage stamp, digital postage stamp that's attached to the email. And so that was the start of uh, this kind of hash-based proof of work. And the cyclones were also interested in electronic cash. So uh, there were some previous systems, but they were centralized and involved more like stable coins. So they involved um, a relationship with the bank to send money in, convert it into coins, spend them, and then for the recipients to take the coins out back in a wire transfer. And so those systems have failed because they're centralized and ultimately. Because of the time that Hashcash was released, it caused a lot of people to think about it as a potential solution to um, to having a decentralized electronic cash, uh, part anyway, that, that you could mine coins and not need to involve a bank, so you just create coins by mining. And uh, when, uh, like, uh, how did you discover Bitcoin? Uh, Bitcoin, where you sent this uh, newsletter with uh, the white paper of Bitcoin? Yeah, so Satoshi sent me an email in uh, August 2008 um, saying that, you know, his uh, abstract for the paper and that he was going to cite Hashcash and asking, to be clear, had the correct way to cite it. Now, normally, I mean, academic papers, it's obvious how to cite them because they're in a journal, you can quote the journal year and the author and that kind of thing. But with, um, because Hashcash was just uh, self-published on my website, it's not obvious how to cite it. So he asked how should he cite it and, you know, send the paper in case I would be interested. So I had exchanged some emails with him about other systems. So I suggested that he might want to look at Way dies B money because it was a similar idea that was earlier than Bitcoin. Uh, and so, uh, as well back then, uh, what the activities with which company did you work in 2008 and when did you uh, start at uh, Blockstream and how did you get full time into crypto? Yeah, well, I mean, I have been a long time working in cryptography, so encryption, digital signatures um, for startups, basically helping them when they're building a network protocol, a peer to peer protocol, or something which has some confidential information, how to authenticate. So, helping people with um, cryptography protocols, and uh, I worked at Zero Knowledge Systems in Canada for a while, uh, which was you know, trying, doing tour like things, privacy, and they were also working on electronic cash. So, I'd implemented uh, several of the electronic cash protocols in an open source library, and at the time Bitcoin was released, I was working for a startup um, which uh, was doing peer to peer uh, kind of file sharing and collaboration software. Um, 
including encryption and authentication. So, yeah, I just got the email and um, I assumed that this was the, the guy's real name. And because I have some you know, technical papers and open source online, it's not unusual that I would get an email talking about one of these papers or mm -hmm. implementing something. So it's kind of normal. And but I think you know already it was clear that he had solved a problem. So uh, B money and Bitgold weren't quite implementable. There were some parts of the system that involved human judgment or coordination or market activity to make the system work. And so Bitcoin uh, solves those things in an automated way. I think by looking at the inflation control, particularly how to the difficulty adjustment, uh, which didn't exist before, at least not in an automated way. So I think the question for me was, um, you know, will it bootstrap? And also that compared to some of the earlier centralized electronic cash systems, Bitcoin had a lot less uh, kind of cryptographic privacy mm -hmm. and I think ultimately that's because it's difficult to do that in a decentralized system where it was known how to do that very with very strong privacy in a centralized system. And uh, can you tell more about founding of Blockstream? Where do you see the problem as well? Like you provide mining services to institutions, but like did you get into mining in 2008? No, I didn't get into mining. I did a little bit of GPU mining in 2013, a little bit of ASIC mining mm -hmm. uh, when the ASICs came out, and uh, more recently some more mining in a data center because as mining got um, larger scale. The efficient, you know, the cost of power became more critical, and it's difficult to get uh, low cost of power in a home, in a house, you know, at home. And so, how blockchain came about is I got uh, much more actively interested in Bitcoin, understanding the details like at the protocol level, at the code level, in 2013, and. I thought I might be able to find a way to improve the privacy because that was something I'd worked on before. And so I proposed this uh, scheme to encrypt parts of transactions, um, which later became called confidential transactions and is now implemented in Liquid. And so, you know, I was exploring how, how you would get a feature like that added to Bitcoin. This is a distributed system, people have to agree, they have to have consensus, and it became clear that it's difficult for Bitcoin to uh, integrate complicated new technology or technology that works a little bit differently to how it normally works. So the confidential transactions are relatively compatible in terms of the model of how Bitcoin works internally, but it was you know, a potentially a large change. And so I changed the direction a bit to try and think of a way for Bitcoin to be more modular so that people could um, sort of, in a more permissionless way, experiment with more complicated things without having to change the base layer. So try to make a way for Bitcoin to be more layered, more modular. And that's where the sidechain concept came in. And so I realized that to build a sidechain is quite a lot of work. You know, you've got to do the, the core protocol work, which is very specialized, but then you also need block explorers and wallets and hardware wallets. And we were already uh, proposing when we raised money for Blockstream in 2014 to do some mining because it's part of the decentralization of the network. And because uh, there's a type of sidechain where you can uh, do merge mining, so if you do some mining, it helps the security. So that's uh, how Blockstream started, and we've basically been doing those things since. You know, of course, Lightning is more recent, and we have a team working on Lightning. But we we implemented the sidechain, which came in as liquid, and we added confidential transactions to it. There was more work to improve that by Craig Maxwell and others. But that's been running for some years now, and so yeah, that's you know, how another uh, type of Bitcoin layer two got implemented. And Liquid has other features, you know, apart from confidential transactions, it has it's very Bitcoin-like. So it just it's like a Bitcoin chain with some a bit more smart contracting, more opcodes, and it has support for assets, so natively, so you can have. You know, Tether, the stablecoin, 
uh, STOs, uh, shares, and other, other kinds of assets for that. And uh, uh, you mentioned the Cree Sun as well, Lightning. Can we call Lightning as well layer 2? Yeah, Lightning is layer 2, and actually, Lightning works on Bitcoin, but it also works on Liquid. So, Liquid is somewhere between, you know, it's maybe a layer 1.5 or something. So it's sort of a sidechain connected, and Lightning can work on top of either of them. And uh, what's the current adoption of Liquid? Um, it's, I mean, it, it was originally thought about for um, traders because of the assets and the possibility to make. Uh, trustless swaps, trustless limit orders between different assets, stable coins and Bitcoin or other assets. And so most of the, and, and the liquid chain is, um, it's not mined, so the blocks are signed by uh, liquid members, so companies. And so most of the companies are exchanges or people in the trading space. And then, you know, some of the users are using it for trading, but, you know, when there's a system and people can use it, they will use it for what they find interesting. So some users are using it for uh, confidentiality, and some are using it because it's a bit cheaper. Um, and so if they're doing dollar cost average buying, they will uh, buy, buy liquid Bitcoin. And then, you know, once a month, like they do it every day, and then once a month they take the Bitcoin and cold store it on the main chain because it's like liquid is more sort of for uh, short term things so for really more security and more censorship resistance you want to use the main chain so that's their plan to use liquid for the short term and then do their cold storage on the main chain which is a you know a reasonable trade off and you mentioned as well uh, as you can uh, knowledge boost uh, and so uh, the, the, you got uh, uh, that for uh, creating of Bitcoin and as well like you know that, that concept uh, started back in the last century uh, so do you have any uh, plans on uh, working on that way maybe releasing ZK or Bitcoin or something like that? Um, so we at Blockstream we did some zero knowledge proof related things so this is relatively new type of zero knowledge proof it's a kind of signature of execution so it's providing you with a compact proof that a program executed successfully allows you to spend a coin and the previous zero knowledge proofs were uh, not they couldn't really prove general execution they could prove simple things or they could prove things interactively mm -hmm. so these signatures of execution also snarks that, that's the type of them are quite an interesting new building block that came about you know some years after bitcoin was released and um, in fact the confidential transactions in liquid is using came before these proofs as well and is, is a kind of custom uh, zero knowledge proof to compactly prove that even though the values are encrypted that the coins add up so there's no new coin screen so so a full node can verify the important parts of the coin even though it can't decrypt it and um, because of that we talked with some university researchers at Berkeley Dan Bernay, to ask you know, if they had any ideas you know show them confidential transactions explain why it's interesting and if they had any ideas or researchers that would find a way to make it more compact and efficient. Mm -hmm. And actually they went away and did some research and came back with uh, bulletproofs, which does allow the, the confidential transactions to be more compact, but it's also a general uh, signature of execution proof. Mm -hmm. um, and the interesting thing about that one as compared to the snarks is it's using the same cryptography as Bitcoin. So it's a very conservative and safe and secure assumption. I think some of the other uh, zero knowledge proof, proofs are a bit experimental and might not remain secure for the long term. So with Bitcoin people are always thinking about security first. So they want to know that you know they're not introducing a new risk by bringing a system in. So uh, I mean in terms of Bitcoin itself doing general zero knowledge proofs, um, I'm not sure. It's we have to see. I think one of the things is if the proof is still being analyzed and it might it might have a security problem in the next year or it might get more efficient then they won't be in a rush to 
experiment with it in the main system because there's so much value um, and people are you know, using it for long term storage as well right um, but I do think that you know long term it's a possibility and the bulletproofs I think are a good have good characteristics but you know these these things are still a bit computationally heavy so they take a long time to create the proofs and to verify the proofs and the proofs are not always that compact. They're reasonably compact but they're not big size. And as well you cooperate with the government, you cooperate with the government of El Salvador, the first country which adopted Bitcoin as a legal tender as well now we are here in the city of Lugano, you cooperate with the government here too. Can you tell more about this and uh, other, any talks with other governments around the world uh, who are which are thinking to adopt well, Bitcoin or crypto? Yeah, I mean, we were pulled into the El Salvador project by uh, Jack Mellor's company and you know, of course we're philosophically supportive of the initiative and so we, we, our company is more about kind of infrastructure, so software and hardware, so we make a, a, the Bitcoin satellite network is something that we operate and it's broadcasting Bitcoin transactions so we sent um, some of the satellite receive equipment to El Salvador and some of the technology they use in the country can use liquid for stable coins or lightning so we're working on some of the core technology that is useful for uh, large scalable Bitcoin and scalable stable coins but we are not um, you know, we're not a contractor or we don't have any agreement with the respective governments, we just provide kind of core network things.